my name's Toby from AWS and welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm joined today by Stephen from the BBC. Hi Stephen. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. Excellent. And you're going to tell us today about BBC iPlayer. Yes, so BBC iPlayer is a service which makes content from the BBC's TV and radio stations available online, both live content and also catch-up content, typically the stuff that's been broadcast in the last 30 days. Okay, thank you. And, and tell me, what have we got here on the board? Um, so on the board, you've got part of the architecture that actually powers iPlayer. So this is to do with capturing live programs from our broadcast chains and making them available as catch-up content to the audience. Okay, so we've got video chunks coming in here. Is this from your um, from your cameras or from a process that comes yes, from your broadcast? Yes, so these video chunks effectively come in via a, a slightly convoluted route from the broadcast chain, but ultimately have come from the cameras. Um, and they're still quite high bitrate at this point. They're about 30 megabits a second, which gives us, um, for each of these files, there are, the files are 80 megabytes in size, gives us about 30 seconds worth of content in each of those files. Um, and they come out of our broadcast chain and we upload them to S3. Okay, so these are uh, chunks of video content. Um, they're raw, they're not compressed at this point, mm -hmm. and they're, they're put into S3, an S3 bucket there. So what happens next? I see we've got uh, a media store here in, on EC2. What, what's the function here? So what happens is we take times from our playout systems and these give us the exact start and end times of a particular program. So down to like the 25th of a second, the, this is when the news started and this is when the news ended. And we use that data along with these 80 megabyte chunks to generate much larger files that can then be used as the source for uh, transcoding the video. So what we do is we take these 80 megabyte chunks and actually using a feature that's in S, built into S3 and in other object stores, we concatenate those chunks together. So we say, we'd like you to make a large file, and by the way, it's going to be made up of lots of small files, and you've already got all those small files. It's that one, it's that one, it's that one. And it concatenates the um, chunks together on the S3 side, so we're not actually having to copy the data around um, not having to copy it out of S3 and then back in again. And we take that data, we feed it into this, this media store, and along with these 80 megabyte chunks, that enables us to make large files, source assets, for our transcode service. Okay, so, so you leverage a, a native feature of S3 mm -hmm. to then create effectively one file per program that's broadcast. Exactly, and yep. for, for each one that we want to make available on iPlayer. Sure, okay, what happens next? So we take that large source file and we feed it into the transcode service. So we've got this 100 gigabyte file coming into the transcode service. And we've actually written here a sort of gen generic transcode layer, which enables us to integrate with different transcode services. Today, we mainly use Elementals platform as a service offering. And what a transcode service does is take this large file and convert it into much smaller files aimed at different devices. So we'll have one file perhaps that's aimed at iOS devices or Android devices. We'll have another file that's aimed at PCs and Macs, another file that's aimed at smart TVs, and so on. And there will be sort of different bit rates, different sizes. Obviously, you can imagine you don't want the same file that goes to an IPTV, a smart TV, available on a mobile phone with a much smaller screen. So okay. we have a selection of different files that we'll make at that point. And yeah, the transcode service also basically yeah, massively reduces the, the size of the file from these, these very large 100 gigabyte files that we'd be dealing with um, at this stage. Okay, and, and from there, the, you have then a, a selection of files for each program, mm -hmm. which are compressed, which are formatted for different devices, and they're then stored in S3, is that yes, right? Yes, so the output, output of the transcode service then goes again into another S3 bucket, and there's a quite complicated interconnection here to our CDNs, mm -hmm. and we work with multiple CDNs. And what the CDNs do, the content distribution networks, they get the files out to the, the audience, to the edge. So they might, be in, they might have servers inside ISPs or places like that, so that then you can watch the video in iPlayer on yeah, your mobile on your phone TV or, or your, your laptop. TV. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And uh, one thing we haven't covered, we've got um, SQS, the simple queuing service there. What, what role does that play in this architecture? So SQS we use for a lot of our business logic. Um, these program times actually come in via an SQS queue. 
um, and then the request here from the time addressable media store onto the transcode service would also be an SQS on an SQS queue. And the reason we're using SQS is because it makes it very hard for us to miss a message. In, you know, in this scenario, each message represents a program going up to iPlayer, so we don't want to drop one or lose one. And SQS gives us that ability to retry if something goes wrong and just know that we're not actually going to misplace one of these requests. So it's process at least once type functionality. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Excellent. So, so what sort of throughput do you have going through the system? So if you just look at the video chunks coming into this S3 bucket, then that will be about 21 terabytes a day. We also have audio from radio systems going into this, uh, this bucket as well, and we use a very similar process for radio. Um, and actually, of course, we have many more radio stations than we have TV stations. So we've probably got a similar amount of audio data. It's just for each individual station, we've obviously got less. Mm. Looking more towards the audience side, um, we're typically expecting something of the order of 10 million play requests a day just for the video content. And again, just for, the, the, just for iPlayer, the, the video side of iPlayer, we're regularly used by 30% of the, over 30% of the adults in the UK. Including we're, me, I'm an iPlayer user. Yeah, excellent. So okay. we're obviously sending quite a lot of data out this end to yeah. individual devices. Okay, and, and how long did this system take for you to build? So we had to build this system in 2013 when a contract was coming to the end, to its end, and that meant we actually started in January of 2013, and we had to have it done by September of 2013. This particular part of iPlayer, we actually managed to build by the summer, and then it was sort of between July and September, we were actually bringing this live channel at a time, basically, mm. um, to replace the old system. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for sharing your architecture today, Stephen. No problem. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for watching. This is my architecture. <laughs>